Hey everyone, this is Robin Nguyen here. Now in today's training, I'm going to share with you how a multinational company achieved up to 35% increase in sales in less than 6 months and how you can too achieve that with this simple website optimization tweaks. Now this is a case study that I'm about to share with you. It's one of my multinational clients. So what you will learn today is the TCE system. It's a proprietary system that I'll share with you later that has helped Affordable Worldwide, which is a multinational company, increase their sales revenue by up to 35% in less than six months. And how to implement three simple website optimization tweaks to siphon qualified customers from Google. And how to instantly stand out from your competitors and be perceived as the authority figure within your industry. Now, finally, it's time to say goodbye to no more chasing window shopper prospects, no more creating endless amount of content just because some guru out there or some website out there claims that content is king. And it's time to say goodbye to no more spending thousands, if not tens of thousands, on paid traffic that never really converts, right? So who is Photobook Worldwide? Obviously, you can check out their website, photobookworldwide.com. They have tons of websites all over the world, serving multiple countries from all over the world different continents from all over the world as well. They manufacture and ship beautiful pictures in a memorable art piece, whether it be printed photo book, canvas, or even green cards. So they're established in Malaysia for well over 10 years now, and they actually express ship their products worldwide with full personalization features. You can check it out later, right? So as I mentioned, they have international customer base from countries like America, Australia, Canada, United Kingdom, Italy, and so on and so forth, right? Now, just to give you a brief overview of their traffic. So as you can see here, this is six months. And if you compare it to the previous year, there's a noticeable increase, right? So here's some of the ranking screenshots. As you can see, since September 2016, and they've seen a huge increase, right, in terms of ranking. Now that is actually being reflected in the traffic as you can see previously. So this is another screenshot of their ranking as well. And another one, massive increase, right? And you can achieve this, right? You can do this without outsourcing to cheap freelancers who claims they can do the work, but you know, at the end of the day, the proof is in the pudding, they can't deliver the results. And you can do this without creating endless amount of content, like I said, just because someone out there claims that content is king, you can get your team to write new articles for the sake of writing articles every single day, right? And you can also do this without spending thousands, if not tens of thousands on paid traffic that never really converts, unless you have a dedicated team that knows exactly how to track your conversions and turn every dollar to more than a dollar return, right? Now, a disclaimer, I'm not guaranteeing that you'll achieve the same results. However, I do guarantee that you'll be in the top 5% of digital marketers just by watching this video till the end. Sounds good? So who am I? Who is Robin Oi? So just to give you an idea, I'm just sharing with you a picture of me. This was taken back when I was six years old and the picture on the right is a more recent one that I did a presentation, a training for local crowd, public for up to like over a hundred people. So, you know, I didn't come from a privileged family. I wasn't born with a silver spoon. I was just an ordinary kid. Whatever that I achieved today, are all self-taught. And with that being said, you know, there's a lot of struggle, which I'll share with you a bit later. And I feel like with all this expertise and knowledge that I've gained over the years, I want to share it and I want to utilize it and help more businesses around this world so that I can touch more lives in that sense, right? So just a quick sharing in terms of my background story. So I'm an engineer by trade. Mechatronics, to be more specific, it actually is a term coined from uh, mechanical, electronics, and robotics, a combination of those three. So, you know, when I graduated as an engineer, I didn't quite like it because of the three months internship that I did with Intel, the company who manufactured all your computer chips. So I actually decided to venture into sales. And, you know, I kind of like it because I was very familiar with the gadgets. I was selling to Chiba laptops and projectors to the corporate clients in Malaysia. And, you know, back in 2008, I decided to migrate to Australia just because I was in a uh, long-term relationship with my partner back then. And 
you know, this I've always wanted to go to Australia, but due to family financial restraint, I couldn't afford to go there for study. So, you know, I decided to try my luck there. So one of my first paying job was being a drafter. It was one of the most boring jobs that I've ever had. But with that being said, when I migrated to Australia, I had a lot of time to myself because I didn't have any friends, family back then. So my partner back then gave me a challenge. She bumped across, you know, at Dale's 30 days challenge to make a dollar online. So I took it up thinking that, you know, come on, how hard could it be, right? But little did I know that it actually took me more than three months, in fact, close to six months to make that dollar online. And ever since then, I never looked back. I started doing affiliate marketing, traffic brokering, even set up my own web development and marketing agency, which I then sold it off. Now, here's a picture. It's, it's just to remind myself of my humble beginning because prior to being a drafter, this is one of my first ever paying cash job, right? I was paid $15 an hour. It was one of the fondest memories that I've ever had because a week before I was wearing suits and ties going out to corporate clients, but a week later I was doing all this hard labor under the hot Aussie sun. So it wasn't a pleasant experience, but everyone's got to go through it, right? So the biggest problem back then was that I was chasing all these shiny objects. So I was buying a lot of courses and not making much money in return. So it was as though I was flushing money down the toilet, right? And it got to a point where I overworked because I was so obsessed. I'm the type of person that if once I set my mind to it, I'll get it by hook or by crook. So it came to a point where my partner back then, because we're living together, she would send me an email to get me to sleep because I would ignore all her messages, right? And things started turning for the better once I decided to focus uh, everything, all my effort on SEO. For those of you who aren't aware, like I'll share with you a bit more later what is SEO, which is search engine optimization. So here's a picture of me conducting a training for one of my corporate clients in Australia. And here's a more recent picture of me conducting training for my corporate clients here in Malaysia. Okay, so I'm the founder of Catapults, which is a SEO consultancy firm in Brisbane, Australia. And robindashmi.com is an extension for me to serve Southeast Asia clients because I realize there's a lot of demand here in Southeast Asia. And you know, ever since I travel back, because we travel a lot, right? You'll see why later. And I decided to extend my branch and reach out to more businesses who are in need of my expertise, right? So here's a more recent picture of us doing a nine months mini retirement trip in Europe. So I think I believe we travel to 12 different countries, 45 different cities. And it was a memorable and unforgettable trip. So if you're not sure what mini retirement means, you can check it out at miniretirementproject.com. It's actually a term coined by Tim Ferriss. So instead of delaying your retirement, you can do it in a small chunk, right? So picture on the left was taken when we were in Parkwell, Barcelona. In the middle, it's obvious, uh, Leaning Tower Pisa on the right. It's a memorable one as well because I overcame my fear of heights in the beautiful town of Annecy. It's a small little town south of Geneva. If you happen to be in Lyon or France, do give Annecy a visit because it's a beautiful town. And as you can see there, uh, it's a beautiful lake here and you can overlook the beautiful Mont Blanc, which is famous for their fountain pen. So, I'm actually on a mission and I made a promise to myself to share all the knowledge and expertise that I've gained over the years to help more businesses and touch more lives. So it's a way for me to, to give back to the community because I live in a world of abundance rather than scarcity because the more I help, the more I'll get in return in that sense. So in any way, shape or form. So what is exactly this TC system that I mentioned before? So T stands for tailor-made solutions that is catered to each individual business. And C stands for cutting edge SEO strategies that's proven to catapult business growth all across Australia, Southeast Asia, and America. And E stands for exclusivity, which means I only work with one or two companies per industry. So this is how I managed to help Photobook Worldwide to increase their sales by up to 35% in less than six months, right? So I'm gonna share with you the uh, simple optimization tricks that you can apply right there and there, okay? 
So what the heck is SEO, you might be wondering. Now, SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization, and when we're referring to search engines, we're referring to Google, Yahoo, and Bing, right? But for this instance, we're gonna use Google as a reference, purely because Google is the largest search engine in the world, okay? So what is Google? Now, just bear with me for those of you who might be you know a bit advanced like you know all this stuff but just bear with me for a sec so you know google is actually a misspelling g double o g o l and they kind of liked it and they kept it till this very day it was established back in 1998 we all know they are the biggest search engine but little did we know that they are the biggest advertising company in the world with their adwords section right and they're probably making more than 100 million dollars per day by now so how google works is very simple they have tens of millions of bots and spiders that goes out and crawl millions if not billions of websites on a daily basis. They gather the information, bring it back to the database, apply a simple, or I shouldn't say simple, uh, it's rather complicated, complex algorithm before they spit out the results in the search engine results page that we normally see. So as simple as a query box that we normally see on Google, there's a, actually a lot of things that happen behind the scene, right? And at the end of the day, Google is a relevancy search engine because think about, think about it, you know, I would say 10 times out of 10 when you search into Google, say for example, I don't know, a beauty hair salon, we'll always get beauty hair salon results. We'll never get a car mechanic results, okay? Because that is what makes Google so unique in the sense that they always provide the most relevant results in the shortest time period. Hence, we seldom use Yahoo or Bing. Okay, so when we talk about the algorithm, we refer to two key elements here. It's all about authority and relevancy. As, as I mentioned before, Google is a relevancy search engine. So one of the main criteria here is authority. Now, what do I mean by authority? Authority refers to, if say for example, an, an organization is well established within the niche and you know, that organization itself will be perceived as the authority figure, okay? Now, you may or may not have heard about the term called on-page SEO and off-page SEO, but essentially what on-page SEO means is, what does your website say, okay? They're comprised of things like your banner, your logo, and every single thing that you have in control, which you can get your web developer to manipulate, and it contributes about 20%. Now, the remaining 80% are contributed by off-page which are oftentimes referred to as backlinks. Think about backlinks as a vote. It's all about what others are saying about your website, okay? So the more votes you get from relevant, quality, high authority website, the higher you will rank. Now, having said that, remember the key here is authority and relevancy, so it's not about the quantity. So some might argue that, okay, say for example, if you get tens of thousands of backlinks to my website, then I'll automatically rank on the first page. That's incorrect, okay? Because Google knows who's linking back to who. And if you say, for example, you're a, uh, I don't know, a, say for example, like photo book, if, if they get a backlink from uh, one of the uh, printing association or one of the high authorities government associated sites within the country, that link alone will probably be equivalent to 10 or 20 times or 100 times more as opposed to them getting a backlink from, say for example, a local beauty hair salon. Okay, you get the idea, right? Now, I won't bore you to death in terms of the technicality, but just to give you an idea, like when it comes to on-page SEO, we're referring to meta description, meta keywords, H1 tag, and title tag, and URL, and things like that. Now, let's not get into that in detail, but just think of it as Googlebot looks at all these gibberish markup languages that we normally, human beings, don't look at. Okay, there's probably going to be three people in this world that are going to be interested looking at all these gibberish markup languages. First one is going to be Googlebot, second one is going to be your web developer, third one is going to be SEO consultant like myself, right? See, Googlebot doesn't look at all, you know, the nice looking pictures that we look at on a website, okay? They will try to decipher what this page is all about based on these markup languages, right? So you might be wondering, why is SEO important? I think it's quite obvious, but let me just lay down the uh, figures and facts for you. 85% of all internet searches are on Google, okay? Think about it, the three most important things that we do the minute we open our eyes every single day. Number one, pick up your phone, you might be checking your email, checking your Facebook account or Instagram, and somehow or rather you end up in Google every single day, okay? 
That's huge. And 94% of Google searches click on organic search results. We all know that, and even I myself, including myself, I tend to skip the AdWord section, and that happens across the globe as well, okay? So I'm not sure about you, but chances are you'll probably skip the AdWord section as well. And 42% click on the first results in the organic listing. So if you have a website, your, your organization have a website, it's been invested a lot of money into it, it's nicely designed, but it can't be found, then it might as well not have a website. Because a website that can't be found on Google first page of Google is as good as not having a website, right? Now, I want to share with you the seven myths of SEO, right? These are the common mistakes, or rather, should I say a myth, that people tend to believe that it's true, okay? Myth number one, SEO is dead, right? You might hear a lot of complaints and people talking about, oh, you know, SEO is a scam, it doesn't work, we all got to start paying money to Google to start getting our ads shown up. Well, this um, usually coming from people from the paid ads section, right? So they want to make money off paid ads. Uh, obviously, Google wants you to spend more money with them. That's why they come up with all these updates to make sure that people like us or people who want to game the system uh, can't stay long on the first page of the organic listing, okay? So, let me tell you this, SEO is never been more alive. If, you, if you've heard a lot of all the news or complaints about SEO is dead, it's far from being dead, okay? You know, there's a lot of organizations that takes advantage of SEO, they've reaped the rewards of SEO, they're still reaping the rewards of SEO, okay? If you're not in the bandwagon of SEO, then you're missing out, right? Myth number two, SEO requires massive budget. You know, I like to call that the big boy syndrome. A lot of big organizations might think that we will need a lot of budget to be spending on SEO for it to work. That's not true, right? So that's why with my approach, with the TC approach, that's how I help Photobook. They didn't have a massive budget to start off with. You know, we start off sensibly, we grow sensibly. Once you get the ROI, then you have more money to spend in terms of spending your campaign, right? So myth number three, SEO is a never-ending content marketing. So what I mean by that is you might be hearing a lot on, oh, I got to blog every single day, or I got to get a team member or one of my staff member to submit articles or post articles. And I'm sick of doing that because in my business, it could potentially be yours. There's only so much you can talk about our products or service, right? So it's not like we are in the entertainment industry where there's a lot of gossips and things like that to be talking about. So, you know, a lot of the topics, I'm sure you can agree with me, it's just rinse and repeat, okay? That's not true, because do not ever fall into the trap of blogging for the sake of blogging, purely because some gurus or some major website out there that claims that, oh, you gotta keep blogging for you to rank well. That's not true, okay? Only blog when there is a requirement to, okay? Myth number four, SEO only works if you pay for AdWords. Now, this is one of the worst myth that you can ever believe. So it's that totally two different ball game altogether, right? AdWords are managed by the AdWords team. It's got nothing to do with your organic search results. So even though if you don't pay for AdWords, you can still rank on the first page, okay? Myth number five, SEO only works for B2C. That's not true. So let me give you an example. If you think that, okay, only end consumers uses Google, then you're so wrong because you might be looking for other services that is applicable to your organization. I don't know, it could be CRM services, all the autoresponder services, those are B2B, right? And let me put this straight up. SEO is not just for you to uh, siphon traffic for, from Google, but on also to establish, to reinforce your brand, your organization's brand in, in terms of uh, brand recognition. Think about this. when. People, to, if, if your prospective customers do their research, because we all human go through these seven different phases, uh, which I'm not going to get into too much detail, before we commit to buying a certain product or service. And nine times out of ten, we do our research in Google. And when they constantly see your brand popping up on the first page of Google, that kind of reinforces that you guys or your organization are the established brand within your industry. Okay? Myth number six, I need lots of backlinks. Okay, I don't know where you get this, but I think I mentioned this before. More doesn't mean it's better, right? So it's not about the quantity, it's about the quality of the backlinks. 
So don't get into the whole routine of building more and more bad mix for the sake of building it, right? You got to analyze who are the authoritative figure within your niche. It's worthwhile to spend your time to get one powerful backlink than to get a uh, hundred users backlinks, right? Now, myth number seven, I don't have much to talk, to talk about our business. So this ties into the uh, blogging or the content marketing. So like I said, it doesn't mean that you gotta constantly blog about your business or talk about your business every single day for the sake of fresh content. Uh, in fact, if you know, you gotta think about from an end user perspective. Google is all about user experience. They want to provide the best user experience for their customers or end users, aka people like us who uses Google. So you need to provide the, the most value when it comes to your content, right? It doesn't mean that if you write 10 different articles, it's going to provide massive value compared to you providing writing one article that provides tons and tons of value. I think you get where I'm coming from, okay? So real quick, is this you? Have you been outsourcing SEO work to cheap SEO freelancer who gives you nice looking reports at the end of the month but no results? Which is quite common because 9 times out of 10, I do get this a lot from my prospective clients or clients who have came back to me after they've gone through the cheaper routes, they thought they could get it done cheaper but you know they get nice looking reports. So at the end of the day, it's not about the reports, it's about the results that matters, right? And like I said, the nice looking reports might include tons and tons of backlinks, a lot of work that needs to be done. Remember here, you, you see here, it's not about what you do, the n number of uh, activity that you carry out within the SEO campaign, it's about pressing the right button, okay, at the right time, right? And also, this is one of the common mistakes, I hope this is, you, you don't fall into this trap, you hire some fresh graduates to carry out SEO work, only to find out that they, they haven't really ranked any sites on their own before. Why? Because they're just fresh grads, right? And in fact, you know, in case you haven't been following the curriculum in the university, they don't actually teach SEO. They teach SEO in general, but they don't go into that. So these are all self-taught knowledge. And because SEO happens, the algorithm changes so fast that they can't even afford to get a uh, printable book. By the time the book's been, been printed and get on the shelf, it's probably been outdated by then, right? So third scenario is that you've tried to DIY your own SEO campaign based on all the free info you read on Moz or search engine land, but no results. This is quite common, right? So if you're gonna cut costs and you don't have the amount of uh, resources to hire fresh graduates, and you oftentimes you try to do it yourself, and you hit a lot of brick wall. So in that sense that you make a lot of mistakes yourself, and the most expensive mistakes are the mistakes that you made yourself. Okay. Now, if you answer yes to any of those questions, you're screwed. Here's why. Now, I don't, don't, don't take this the wrong way, I mean it, like, uh, I'll share with you why. So, how many nice looking reports can you afford to see before you start seeing the real deal, right? And nice looking reports are just good for reporting purposes, but when it comes to the real deal, it's the result that matters, okay? And how much time and money are you going to invest into these young graduates before they actually know how to rank? In fact, you're paying them to learn how to rank instead of them getting the job done for you, okay? And can you afford to play Russian roulette with your company's resources and branding with all the DIY method? Yeah, you might be saving money in terms of outsourcing the work or getting consultants to do the work for you, but in essence, you're missing out a lot of opportunity costs in the sense that your time could be better off be doing something that you're really good at, okay? So instead of trying to do it this yourself, why not get the expert to do it, okay? You say, I know, because I was screwed too. You know, when I was first starting out, trying try to do all this stuff, things that I'm, not, that I'm not good at, and the reason why I put this image here with the panda is because some of you might relate to this. About four or five years ago, Google rolled out a major update called the Google Panda update, and it literally wiped out websites overnight, okay? So websites that used to be on the top of the page, first page, uh, they were doing all this spammy stuff, trying to gain the system, and Google just had enough of it and rolled out this algorithm out there that, you know, just wipe out all those sites. So sites that used to be on the first page will just drop to nowhere, okay? So fortunately, there's hope for you. So here's what I like to call the three simple website optimization tweaks that you can carry out right after this video, and you'll probably see almost instantaneous results, okay? So first one we're going to talk about is on-page tweaks. Second one is social profiles. 
and the third one's uh, backlinks, okay? So when it comes to on-page, I think I mentioned this before earlier on, we are talking about H1 tag, all the markup lang languages. So I want to just set this straight. So there are a few key elements here that we got to set it straight on your website. So first one we're going to talk about is H1 or title tag. And then we're going to move on to H2, H3 tags, and then the meta tags, which includes a meta description and keywords. And then we're going to talk about keyword density, right? And once again, after that, page, page speed is one of the things that tend to get overlooked by a lot of web developers and SEO consultants. And then we're going to talk about name, address, and phone schema, right? So just stay with me, bear with me for a sec. I know some of this might be quite technical, but just hear me out. Okay, so with H1, you got to make sure that on your website, on every single page, not just on the home page, you need to have only one H1 tag, okay? It can't be more, right? So these are the most common mistakes I would, I've seen across all the sites that I've dealt with. Do not repeat the H1 tag. What I mean by that is because of the styling sheet of your website, sometimes you might get few H1 tags purely because aesthetically you need a certain headline appeared a few times. So get rid of that. Make sure those are just H2 or H3 tags instead of H1. Make sure they only have one unique H1 tag that talks only about one particular topic or similar topic within that page, okay? So for instance, Photo Book Canada, when it comes to forward slash calendar, the H1 tag should be calendar. It shouldn't be Photo Book. Photo Book uh, meant for like the home page, okay? So don't try to jam in too many H1 tags, right? And then we talk about title tag. This is important. This is where we talk about the title of the page. And this is where you get highlighted or bold. Okay, when you search into the organic listing, if it matches the search term, it will get bolded. Okay? So you got to make sure that all your main keywords that you want to rank for are highlighted within the meta title. Right? So as you can see here, photo book calendar, forward slash calendar, you have personalized custom photo calendars, make your own photo book calendar. Right? So that is a well-targeted title tag. Now, when we talk about H2 or H3 tag, we are referring to like similar keywords or should I say the LSI keywords in the sense that latent semantic indexing is just a fancy way of saying synonyms, right? So you got to sprinkle around. So for example, like calendars, you got to have, for example, you have other desk calendar or something relevant to calendar, okay? So printable calendar and things like that. So those are considered as secondary keywords, right? So sprinkle them around the, uh, the page as well. And then we're going to talk about meta text. So meta text uh, involves meta description. So I'm going to talk about meta description. Meta description are the two-liner blurb that you see on the search results. So just think about that as your billboard. If you have a billboard paid for on the busiest street in your country, then you got to make sure that it conveys these three important message. What's in it for your potential customers? Why should they choose you? And a proper call to action. Okay. So See here, we have personalized custom photo calendars and photo, at Photo Book Canada, make your own seven days guaranteed shipping, 100% quality guarantee, get it now, okay? So it cannot be empty. If you leave it empty or leave it blank, what Googlebot's gonna do is they're gonna scrape the first two sentences of your website and assume that's your meta description. And if you let Googlebot do the guessing game, you guessed it right, they're not gonna do a good job, okay? So the next thing we're gonna look at is keyword density. Now, keyword density is very easy to calculate. All you need to do is just go to any of your website, any page or within your website, select all, which means you'll select every single thing that you can see, including all the uh, title and copyright status, and go to wordcounter.net and paste it there, right? And what happens is that you'll see the uh, keyword density on your right-hand side. But what you can do is you can actually command F, for those of you who are using Mac or control F, to search for the particular keyword anchor text that you want to target or you want to rank for and use that number of times that it's been found on that page divided by the number of words, okay? So you will get, and then to multiply that by 100, you'll get your percentage. Now, the percentage, there's no fixed rules in terms of what's a good percentage. The ideal rule is for you to basically get an average of the keyword density of the website has already been ranking on the first page. Use that as a guideline, okay? That's the best, uh, I would say, metric that you can use 
as opposed to us coming up with a fixed value. But generally, I would say anywhere between, you're, you're, you're going to be safe anywhere between 0.1 to 1% of keyword density of the targeted keyword that you want to rank for. Don't go overboard. Anything over 1%, you're threading on a, on a very fine line. You might get away with that sometimes because of other competitors are having a higher keyword density, but usually it's less than 1%. Okay. Now, page bit insights. This is another element that tend to get overlooked by a lot of web developers because it's all about how nice it looks, right? We all focus a lot of our energy and resources into how good looking our website is but we tend to overlook in terms of how fast it actually takes to load up. Now, common sense will tell you that the longer a website takes to load up, the higher the chances of people clicking back and go to your competitor. So Google actually penalizes website that takes longer to load up, versus opposed to website that takes a short amount of time to load up, it's quick, it's snappy, and you know you get a lot of brownie points to rank on the first page of Google. So head over to developers.google.com forward slash speed forward slash page speed forward slash insights or you can easily google it by the name of page speed insights and first results you click on it paste your url in there and you get a score anything below 70 it's not good so there's always going to be recommendation underneath just click on the link there and you'll show you what to be fixed right so next up we're going to move on to name address and phone schema now this is more towards the google map listing or google business listing you need to have a word for word name, address, and phone number of your business highlighted in your website. And you gotta use this schema text. You can go to schema.org for slash local business to get all the markup languages, right? You might wanna get your web developer to, to carry out this job, okay? So basically, what you're telling Google is you know, the address region, the address locality, the street address, telephone number specifically, rather than them trying to decipher okay this is your address and things like that because we're going to talk about citation which is a big part of backlinks citation means a mention of your website without the hyperlink okay so if you have all this data on your website it matches up with your google business listing that is a big plus point that you have there okay next up we're going to talk about social profiles uh, this is where nine times out of ten like people will have a youtube channel or facebook fan page but they will tend to ignore Google Business Listing, Google Plus, Instagram, and things like that just because it's not applicable to their business. I get that. But at the very least, you need to have Google Plus, Google Business Listing, YouTube channel, Facebook fan page, or Pinterest page. Okay? Uh, if you're more of a professional consulting service, have a LinkedIn page. Okay? So what I mean by that is Google Plus. Have a Google Plus page, even though not many people are using it, but for the sake of you getting a backlink from plus.google.com that is a very high authority backlink okay so that is what I mean by that and Google business listing in case you haven't claimed your business listing go to Google map type in your business name or type in address and somehow rather Google might have your business information click on claim this listing if you haven't claimed it follow the verification process and claim it because at the end of the day Google wants to see that you're a legit business you're a genuine business you're not just an affiliate marketer who, you have, who doesn't have an office right YouTube channel this is also a powerful place for you to get a powerful backlink so once you set up your channel you usually have to enter your website and that is considered as a backlink you might not be aware about this but let me tell you this youtube.com has got domain authority of 99 okay so in case you're wondering what is DA, just bear with me for a sec, I'll share with you a bit more about that, okay? Facebook fan page, I think this is enough said. Everyone uh, probably has a Facebook fan page these days. And setting your address and contact information and website up properly will get you social signals. In terms of when someone talks on your Facebook fan page or you post a listing here or an image, you have a backlink referencing back to your website, that is considered as a backlink as well, right? Pinterest, this may or may not be applicable to you, but however, it is applicable to photo book. So you can see that they've taken advantage of all the images painted on Pinterest. Twitter, you see there, photobookworldwide.com, that is a backlink. So that is a, a very high authoritative backlink. So here are some of the samples that you can get high authority backlinks without you knowing it that you actually not done it before. You just don't realize that it's actually a powerful backlink, okay? Instagram is another place. 
And then about.me, just give you an example, this is like your online resume. This is another place where they call it the web 2.0s. These are all the websites out there like Weebly, you know, about.me, SlideShare and things like that. Those are the places that you can get high authority backlinks as well. So, you know, just a simple creation of your account, place in your details, and then you get a backlink. See here, that's how I got a backlink to my main website, right? Slideshare.net is another subsidiary of LinkedIn that you should take full advantage of it. And see here, this is how I get a backlink to my website as well. So this might not be applicable to Photobook because this is because I'm more towards the consulting service. They are not, they're more towards end user. So, okay, let's move on to backlinks. So we're gonna talk about anchor tags and how to not over-optimize your anchor tags, how to get high authority relevant backlinks and how to get social signals, okay? Now, when it comes to anchor tags and over-optimization, this is one of the most common topics that, that you might hear a lot of people talk about it. So rule of thumb is do not repeat the target keywords more than once. So say for example, if you want to rank for, you know, for, ex for instance, like Photobook Canada, you want to rank for Photobook Canada, do not repeat Photobook Canada more than once, okay? Otherwise your backlinks profile is going to look very, very routine and predictable when you have hundreds and hundreds of backlinks that says Photobook Canada. Like you don't need to tell Google a hundred times that this page is about Photobook Canada, okay? You get the gist, right? So make sure that you diversify it with synonyms, which I'll talk on point number three. So moving on, point number two, do not build too many anchor text backlinks in too short amount of time, link velocity. So what I mean by that is don't go crazy over building backlinks this whole week and then the next following coming couple of weeks, you stop doing backlinks all of, out of a sudden. It does raise a red flag from Google's perspective, okay? You gotta do it naturally. Because when there's activity, when there's social activities, you go out and you, you get JV partners and things like that for your organization, there's bound to be backlinks created from here and there, okay? And finally, do include LSI keywords, aka synonyms, to diversify your anchor text percentage. So instead of saying photo book Canada 10 times, you could be saying print photo book in Canada, Canada Canada's uh, top photo book printer, or something along that line. It still refers back to the same thing, but it's not quite exact match, okay? I hope you get the idea. So next up, we're gonna talk about high authority and relevant backlinks. Now, before we get into that, I need to explain what are domain metrics. So when you talk about domain metrics, there are a couple of, I would say, top five metrics that you need to look at. First one is domain authority. This is from Moss. That's why I call it the Moss metrics. Page authority is from Moss as well. Trust flow is from Majestic. Citation flow is from Majestic. And topical trust flow is from Majestic. Now, Moss is a widely known tool and brand out there that basically crawls all the websites similar to what Googlebot is doing, but they have like their own metric system, okay, which Google takes into account their domain metrics a lot, okay? So if they go to moz.com, they have a domain authority of 92 out of 100. That's a very high authority website. So the perfect score obviously can't be achieved. Even Google or YouTube has only got 99 over 100. So the higher the domain authority, the more established, the more weight you have for your website to rank. It's as simple as that. Now, don't ask me why they come up with domain authority. That's just how Google has been. Google used to use uh, refer to page rank, but it's been obsolete because a lot of people tried to game the system and manipulated the scoring system. That's why they now rely on Moz domain authority and page authority, okay? Now, page authority, uh, we refer to subpages. So, domain authority refers to like the root domain, which means like moz.com. So, if for example, moz.com forward slash research tools forward slash OSC, that's a page authority, okay? Now, you can use this tool for free if you go to moz.com forward slash research tools forward slash OSC, okay? However, if you want to check out more functions, there's obviously a paid version for this, okay? And not only that, most tool Open Site Explorer gives you an overview of who are linking back to you, okay? So Majestic is another tool that we normally use in when it comes to SEO. You can go to majestic.com. This is where they give you the trust flow and citation flow. Now trust flow is sort of like a metric that they measure how trustworthy your website is. 
and you can see this topical trust law as well this is determined by the backlinks that you are getting and the source of those backlinks where are they coming from are they coming usually from arts or television uh, related website or they are more towards law arts so on and so forth right citation flow is a metric that they measure remember how i talk about citation citation is different from backlinks because they don't physically have a hyperlink back to your website it's just a mention of your name so say for example if your website were to mention majestic and you don't place a link to majestic.com that's a citation okay so that's why it's very important for you to have your nap your name address and phone schema on your website and you know so that you can try to match up as much as possible of those name so google is smart enough to determine you know if there's a mention of your name your brand from somewhere else without linking back to your website okay that goes towards your citation flow and obviously the higher the score the better it is okay now social signals what i mean by social signals a mention of your website or it could be you posting a picture on facebook fan page and linking back to your website could be people talking about your brand on their facebook channel or their youtube channel or their twitter account it doesn't have to be a link it's just a mention of your name those are considered as social signals and for a popular business or, or an established business it's quite normal for you to get tons and tons of social mentions or social signals on a daily basis okay so once we've gone through that the three important criteria i'll check what's next right now we're going to talk about instant authority figure Remember I told, mentioned to you earlier on, I'm going to show you how you can instantly stand out from your crowd. So I, I like to use these two methods, what I like to call the application form. And then, and then once you get them to apply for your service, you create a custom proposals. Now I know this might not be applicable to all business. It may or may not be applicable to your business or your organization, but do hear me out. I'm sure you can utilize this in one of your campaign. So think about this. When you go to the surgeon, when you go to the lawyer or whatsoever, you don't bargain for price, right? And that's because they position themselves as the expert or authority within their niche. So right now I'm teaching you how to instantly position yourself as the authority figure though, even though you, you already are an authority figure within your niche. So first method that I like to use is application form. So if you go to my website, robin oecom check out some of the videos and this, this orange button here, uh, once you click on it, it goes to a application form so it's here some of my details that i talk about and once you click on that orange button it goes to this discovery application form and this application form basically forces potential prospects or filter out tire kickers it forces them to fill up the details before they can they can even get to know how much i'm charging for my service right and it's three pages long now these are the hurdles i have to go through before they get to know how much i'm charging this is to eliminate all the tire kickers and people will call up and you know they just want to find out how much I'm charging and things like that and compare uh, it could be my competitors so this is the best case scenario right so you might be wondering do people actually fill this up as a matter of fact they are and I get this every other day and you might be wondering why why do they take the effort to fill out all those forms it's simple because they've got that need they've got the problem that I'm the obvious solution and once they they found me through Google that is a good trust that's been built because I practice what I preach they can find me right they can find me easily if you're in, in Malaysia if you search for SEO Malaysia I'm at the top as your Kuala Lumpur as your Penang as your Johor I'm at the top so question if you're going to consult someone about SEO would you consult someone who claims he and she can do it but no proof or someone who has actually done it and still doing it at the moment I think the answer is quite obvious right so what to do next you want to get started with your current website campaign right now with all the things i've just mentioned to you all the on-page stuff while this you know breakthrough strategy is both fresh in your mind and tend to be overlooked in the marketplace now remember seo is a marathon and it's not a sprint so don't take this the wrong way don't do this and expect overnight results it doesn't happen that way that is adwords right it takes time and be patient with it because it's a medium to long-term investment to your brand okay so if you're time poor you still need help with all this and looking to add multi million into your revenue or more into your business within the next 12 months or less 
and let's have a chat via messenger okay just remember this is one of my famous quote sorry it's not my famous quote it's a famous quote from Albert Einstein which is one of my favorite quote he goes insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results so if you don't like what you're seeing at the moment and you are struggling to manage your team or your organization you get the exposure and you're busy with all the offline marketing stuff this is where I can come in and help you out right start taking action if you're time poor let me handle it for you but make sure you at least execute some of the at least two out of the three strategy that I just shared with you okay so with that being said thank you for watching this video comment with below if you're committed to using this strategy in your arsenal and if you like me and my team to personally help your organization to add multi-million dollar revenue or more to your business in 12 months or less click the link below and let's take it from there okay once again thanks for watching this video and i'll talk to you soon